Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, so this whole idea for us to do this came about because one of you wonderful certifying physician partners of ours um, basically came to us with some questions about products saying, you know, back when the program started, we didn't have much on the market back then. So you didn't really uh, go in too much depth with a lot of products because there wasn't much available. But these days, when you look at a dispensary menu, whether it's the apothecarium or another dispenser, there is a lot of stuff that is now available in Pennsylvania and a lot of the grower processors are online producing products. So we thought it would be a great idea if we had a webinar that included the certifying physicians in Pennsylvania so you can learn a little bit more about all of the products that are available in Pennsylvania. So the trainings that we have, we're starting off with our own uh, grower processor, uh, Alara tonight. And they're going to have uh, we're going to have six additional grower processors over the next uh, few weeks, and all of these grower processors we do carry at the apothecarium, so their products are going to be available. And a lot of this training that you receive is the same training that our dispensary staff and our pharmacists receive as well from these grower processors. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to educate you more on the products that you're uh, recommending. I'm sure you get a lot of questions of when patients come in and get certified by you or uh, by telemedicine and you know what do you recommend and you probably feel like you've caught off a little and flat footed because you're like I'm not really sure anymore because there's so many products ask your pharmacist which is totally fine we like that. Um, but we want to make sure to provide you with as much education as possible, uh, so you have a better understanding about what's available in the market and I will turn it over to Michelle. Awesome. I just, I want to make sure that everybody can see my screen because I've had a, it stopped sharing so you can still see it. Great. Mm -hmm. I, thank you again, everyone. Hi, hello, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. And we're really pleased, as Framar said, to present this nine week physician training series. And we may expand it in the future depending on how popular it is. So I'm just going to go over a few slides about the apothecarium. We are, oh, why isn't my slides advancing? The Apothecarium is a full service, award-winning medical marijuana dispensary, really committed to providing patients with quality medical marijuana in a warm and welcoming environment. We have three locations in Pennsylvania, one in Plymouth Meeting, one in Lancaster, and one in Thorndale. And we really pride ourselves in offering empathy, education, and ongoing support to all of our patients. What makes us different from other dispensaries is that we are vertically integrated, which means that we're both a grower processor and a dispensary. Um, and we're also very medically focused as well as physician and patient focused, hence the reason for putting together programs like these for both patients and physicians. In addition to this physician training, we do offer monthly education webinars for our patients. So if any of um, our physician partners like yourselves are interested in speaking on one of those webinars and, you know, kind of helping market your practice without marketing it, um, please be in touch with me. Um, everybody has my email because if you receive this invitation, you have my email address. Finally, um, the Apothecarium brand was founded in 2011 in San Francisco. And this was just a quote um, from the, our founder, Ryan Hudson. And really, we just aim to help patients find the right medicine for their needs, and we help them understand how to use medical marijuana both safely and effectively. So that's a little bit about the apothecarium. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen in a moment and turn the presentation over to Marissa Liuzzi, who is our Director of Dispensary Engagement for both um, the Alera Healthcare and Kind Tree brands. So thank you, Marissa, for joining us, and there we go. Oh, Marissa, you're on mute, babe. Can you see my PowerPoint screen? Let me make sure. We can. It looks a little bit small. Did my screen look that small, Framar? No. Hmm. Okay. So I don't know if you have like a presenter view. I mean, we can see it, but it's just, it's only like half of the screen. Okay, one second. Let me try again. Sorry. Oh, okay. Take your time. We got okay, time. It's only six oh seven. We have till seven. <laughs> so 
apologies. Oh, I had it all ready to go. My doctor friends on here. Here we go. There it is. Better? All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle. Um, and thank you for having me, everyone, for joining. Really appreciate your time. I know you're super busy and it's St. Patty's Day. So um, thank you again for joining. So my name is Marissa Liuzzi. My title is Director of Dispensary Engagement for TerraSend and Allaire Healthcare here in PA. I did start with the company um, from day one. So I work very closely with our cultivation team, processing Michelle on the outreach side, Franmar on the retail and medical side, et cetera. And I do a lot of these trainings. Um, with our dispensary staff and soon with our patients as well. Um, we just got this approved to, to um, branch out a little bit. So I am, I am going to take off my video just so I can focus on the PowerPoint, but please feel free to type in any questions that you might have while I'm going over the PowerPoint and I will certainly take time between each slide to, to address those. So a little bit about Alara Healthcare. Um, we were acquired back in 2019 by the international cannabis company called TerraSense. And with that new overall ownership, we were able to really broaden our portfolio as well as our growth facility, which is really great because the demand in PA has been significant. So we did start with a 60,000 square foot square foot hybrid greenhouse. And we've since added on a, I'm so sorry, my dog is in the background. Um, we've since added on a 40,000 square foot indoor facility. One second for me. Apologies. We're back. Okay. Um, so that 40,000 square foot is also indoor double stacked. So that's really allowed us to be one of the most consistent providers in the state week to week for our dispensaries and of course the patients. We grow cannabis like many others do. Uh, we start from seed originally. And we have a library of over 300 that we can really play from. Um, but right now we mostly grow from clones and clones are cuttings of what we call a mother plant. And a mother plant is like it sounds, right? It is the mother. She provides life to all the baby plants. So we take those cuttings from her and we get an exact replica of that strain that we cut from. They stay in vegetative states um, for a few months where they get big and strong. And this is where we really mimic summer. So it's nice with the hybrid greenhouse because we can use both the sunlight and supplement with you know, um, lights in the greenhouse to create that summer. As well as the indoor, we have full control. So the lights can be on up to 24 hours if we really wanted to, to have those plants grow nice and strong. Once they are ready and large enough and strong enough, we will, we will move them to a flowering stage. And what tells the plant to flower is mimicking fall. So now we'll have more of a 12, 12 hours of light, 12 hours without light, and that will tell the plants, okay, winter's coming. <laughs> I better start flowering now um, and getting everything out to reproduce. After a few months there as well, uh, we will move to harvest. I think we have a question. Let me see. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, we can do the questions at the end, Marissa. No problem. Yeah. 
better to probably sure wasn't something on that slide. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm monitoring them. So if okay, something comes thank up you. as you go along, so you don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Thank you. So I did want to share too, if you haven't had the opportunity to really see a grow um, in, in person. These are, this is a photo of the little baby clones that I described that we are cutting from the mother plants and a shot of our actual grow in the hybrid greenhouse. So you could almost see that sunlight coming through. And this also shows you how we grow. So what medium we use. There's a lot of different options out there. We grow in cocoa fiber cubes. So you could actually see those cubes there. One of the reasons we use cocoa fiber is because it, it allows us to use less water to feed our plants. So that's great because we're very much conscious of the environment and being as responsible as possible. You can also see some evidence here that we avoid any kind of pesticides in the terms of a more proactive integrated pest management system so that we really don't need to use any chemicals as well on our plants. We try to keep everything chemical free and or as organic as possible. This is the um, more harvest stage, right? So the plants are mature, ready to end their life cycle as it were. Um, and we happily do that by harvesting them when they're ready to go. Um, from this stage, we do harvest in two different ways. So we will harvest with the product categories in mind of all the dried cured. So we'll harvest, trim, and I'll go over our trim a little bit more in the next couple slides. And we will move those plants to a humidity controlled room where they will stay for some time to dry and cure before we package. During that time, um, it's very important actually, they're losing about 80% of their water weights from the time we harvest, the time you, the patient will see it packaged and dried, but also the curing process really develops um, the THC profile as well. Even after harvest, it will increase somewhat during that curing process. A little bit about what kind tree is. Uh, again, our mantra is, as the name suggests, a little kindness goes a long way. We are kind to our plants. We try to be kind to the community and kind to the people we serve. Um, that being said, I mentioned before, growing in cocoa fiber cubes and that being a really great technique to try to minimize the amount of water we use. But we also use a water reclamation system, which is fantastic too, um, because for obvious reasons, we're saving tons of water. And I mentioned as well, we use both natural sunlight and we supplement with LED sunlight. And LED is a more advanced light that uses less energy. So really trying to be as kind to the planet as possible as well. We just released this brand of flower. We transitioned it from Alara to this kind tree brand last year, late last year. Um, so all our strain specific products, our flower, et cetera, did transition. A couple of things to know for your patients is that there is a QR code on the side there where your patient can scan that code and be directed to our website. The website does have every single strain in our current library of Kind Tree, a photo, the lineage, and a little description to give you an idea of what the effects might be. During this process, we also really took a look at our strain library. We started growing in PA as soon as we could, three years ago now or so. Um, so we have had some time to look at some data and see how these strains perform and eliminate some and maybe bring on some new ones later in the year. But these have been really some of our, um, not just usual suspects, but popular ones, really the ones that patients and dispensaries have told us they would like to see time and time again. Tiger's milk and echo, echo cooler specifically, you can't find in the market otherwise. I believe we're the only ones growing it. And those are really great um, sativa leaning, but very, very even type strains as well. 
Um, but tiger's milk does lean a little bit towards the indica. I typically recommend this for pain relief, very popular. Cookies and chem, golden goat. Golden goat is a classic strain, a classic sativa type strain. Uh, you can find this, <coughs> excuse me, in other, other GPs on the market to grow this, um, but I am partial to our golden goat. And then GG4, aka Gorilla Glue, which is, um, we do use the name GG4 specifically. That is also a great classic strain, a more indica leaning variety for patients that are looking for some flower to maybe sleep better or get a little bit more pain relief. For your knowledge, we do have two different tiers of our cannabis that we provide to dispensaries and patients. We looked at the data, as I mentioned, from growing these different strains over the three years time. And we looked at different pillars in terms of the vitality of the plants, really the color, the flavor, the aroma, the trichome sheen and development, the yield we gained from that strain, the market needs, of course, the potency as well. Um, but looking at that holistic part of the plant, to make a decision on whether or not we feel it fits reserve category or select. With reserve being more of those um, timeless kind of strains, but also maybe rare in the PA market. Over time, they may have performed better in terms of growth and also potency and trichome development. Whereas their select strains might be those that are typically less potent, maybe less rare in the market as well. Um, you can maybe find it, you know, in other peas, but still very classic strains. This is a, um, a slide of a top cola of a cannabis plant. And the cola is really what we call um, the that nice bud, that gathering of the flower bud. And the top cola is known to be the strongest part of the plant because it's closest to the light source. I have this here also to describe how we trim because uh, we did recently make some changes there. So what we do is if we're trimming for a dried product, we will, or or live, we will remove those fan leaves. And you'll see those are the larger leaves on the side of the plant. Really their main purpose is to give that plant support. They don't have too much medicinal value in terms of us being able to process it. So those are removed and considered medical waste. The sugar leaves are also trimmed, but we do trim in a machine trimmer. So we use a commercial machine trimmer for the amount of harvest and the pounds that we're producing right now. We do try to keep that on the, do keep it on the softest setting possible so that um, just some of those outside sugar leaves are removed. The sugar leaves are still highly, highly medicinal. Um, they contain a lot of trichomes and you can see a magnified shot of what that looks like, right? Um, it has all the cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, all that good stuff. It's still very beneficial to, to that patient. All right, extraction methods. Um, if there's any questions on flour, certainly type them up. I'm, I'm going to kind of shift now to more of our processed goods that come from the flour that we grow, the cannabis that we grow. We use two types of processing methods, ethanol as well as BHO or butane hash oil. The butane we use for our prism line, which is our concentrate line. So we use that to make dry, cured, concentrate and form all different forms, and I'll go over those in more detail in the next slides, <clears throat> as well as all of our live products. So all our live concentrates, as well as our liquid live resin cartridges. So I know butane sometimes sounds scary, right, to have butane in your medicine, but we test this through our third-party lab as well as in-house to make sure that the levels of butane are safe. Uh, we do a filter process to remove any of those additional waxes or lipids that are found through that process from pulling it from the plant. 
as well as any additional chlorophyll that might have been pulled from that plant that we don't necessarily want in the end product, right? We also, like I mentioned, we extract our fresh frozen material through the butane extractor. So if we're harvesting for fresh frozen product, we will not dry it or cure it. So we'll not go to a humidity controlled room. We will do a rough trim of it, a rough cut and send it right to that freezer in columns, right? And then after a week or so, we will process from that frozen state. So for crystals, we will have um, D-wax column as well. And those crystals are made with this process. Those are live THCA crystals with what, what we call high terpene extract oil as well. In ethanol, we use that for all our distillate products. So everything that has distillate in it, our tinctures, our topicals, our distillate vapes, those are made using the ethanol process. Ethanol is a great solvent, um, depending on the temperature and the temperature that extraction occurs because it will pull a lot of material, but it will also pull some chlorophyll. So we, we'll use different measures, different temperature control methods to remove those undesirable components. And we'll do this several times until we're really satisfied with that end distillate clean product. So again, removing some of those waxes and lipids that inevitably are going to be pulled along with the cannabinoids and terpene. Throughout this process as well in the ethanol, we will we will pull the product, right? We'll use that ethanol extraction process, but then we'll also um, evaporate that solvent. We'll evaporate that ethanol. Uh, we can even reuse that ethanol for other pulls, for other batches. At that point though, with the material, we'll de decarb it, meaning we'll take it from that THCA to THC and collect it into a boiling flask for distillation. Right, so that decarbed oil will then go into the distillation machine into that process where further impurities like some light oils, the terps are removed as well. And we try to get a pure form of that cannabinoid, so those THC and CBD. For something like RSO, which will be, we will be releasing very soon, it really ends here, um, this decarb process. That will be your RSO, right? Um, but we will further distill it past that to get to that in, in the distillation and What we do for those distillate carts as well is we will reintroduce terpenes to create those strains that patients know and love. So those strain profiles of the terps, we will reintroduce to the THC that we pulled from all our different strains to create those distillate carts. This is an image of what our cartridges look like. They are compatible with any battery. They're pretty standard um, in terms of the threading and the use. The um, tip is plastic, the chamber is Pyrex, and the wick is ceramic. We don't add anything to our oils in terms of VG, PG, et cetera, any of those additives. Um, it's the cannabinoids and terpenes. For our liquid live resin cartridges, we extract from the strain specific plant and we take those strain specific terpenes as well as the cannabinoids for the cartridge. So it's a little bit different from the distillate for the liquid lime in that sense. The distillate, we're reintroducing terps and those cannabinoids are coming from all different strains, whereas the liquid lime is pulled from that specific strain and used in that cartridge. Distillate also again is made from dried cured plant material and liquid lime is made with that live plant material, that live fresh material. Moving on from our strain specific products to more of our Alera branded products, which is our medical line, what we consider our medical line, we really recreated this spectrum of 
sativa to indica leaning products. And we really wanted to address four universal symptoms with really any condition that a patient might, might present. So pain, sleeplessness, anxiety, lack of energy or focus are the four that we really try to pinpoint in making these different formulations. So we created ratios of THC and CBD that are thoughtful to what we want that line to achieve. Um, and we also add specific terpenes that are known to have specific types of effects. So for example, um, a sativa leaning strain um, or profile might have a terpene like pinene and limonene. So the shine, for example, which is more leaning in that sativa, that more uplifting, would you'd find pinene or limonene or terpenes like that that are really known to provide that uplifting, uppity type effect. Also great because shine, for example, is a one-to-one, -one, right? So equal parts THC to CBD, great for daytime use. Um, I recommend this sometimes for pain, um, if I'm talking to dispensaries. Um, we have this in a vape pen form, a cartridge, as well as the tincture. Our E is next on down the line, that nice lotus um, image is a one to 10 THC to CBD. So this is really our CBD line, our CBD heavy uh, product. Currently, we only have this in tincture form. But a great way to use this is one, because it's CBD heavy, a patient could possibly use this if they maybe took too much THC and were feeling negative effects. Some of that CBD would help to bring them down a little bit, uh, but also it's great, I feel, as a daily use tincture um, and product line for those inflammatory symptoms. CBD has been shown to be really great, right, with reducing inflammation. Breathe next down there is a two to one. And this one has terpenes that are a little bit more relaxing, but not meant to put anyone to sleep. And that ratio of two to one, again, is to have that same similar effect. So a little more THC to be a little more relaxing, but not too much that um, the, the patient might want to fall asleep. This comes in a vape pen as well as a cartridge. We had this in a topical, but we have since actually discontinued um, of the topical version. Our Freedom One-to-One, -one, um, that's another one-to-one -one product currently only in a vape form right now. And a little story on that one is we did work with a veteran at our cultivation site that was dealing with symptoms of PTSD and worked in groups and had groups working with um, other veterans with PTSD and noticed a pattern of really leaning towards the strain of Harlequin to help ease those symptoms and anxiety. But one issue with that is only one grower on the market and PA cur currently grows that strain specifically and it's sporadic, it's here and there. So we wanted to create something that was always available, medicine will always be there and not necessarily strain specific, but we mirrored Harlequin. So we followed the terp profile. We have that one-to-one -one ratio and um, it's, been, it's been shown to be a really nice addition to re reducing some anxious feeling. I'm gonna skip over a couple of those icons and move all the way to um, Soothe and Dream. I um, hope I'll go over to next, but Soothe is a five to one. And this is a little more sedative than let's say the Breathe uh, because it does have a bit more THC in it. The reason for that is because we were gearing towards pain in, this, in the Soothe line. Um, and this comes in every form available. It comes in the vape pen, it comes in a topical, as well as a tincture, so the whole family of products. Our dream, which is really a quote-unquote indica product, is an eight-to-one THC to CBD, and this is intended to cause drowsiness. It comes in a vape form as well as a tincture form, and the terpenes really reflect those that are typically found in indica varieties and may have been shown to induce sleep. THC Plus is another uh, line right now. It's also only in tincture form, uh, but it is a THC only tincture. It is currently unflavored. Um, we are making some improvements there as well. I will go over that too, but this has um, 10 milligrams of total THC per milliliter. 
to give you an example, I mentioned Sue, but this is a whole line of the family of products to address you know, the, the tincture for that longer lasting, but longer onset relief and that systemic feeling, the vape for that more instant onset, shorter lasting, but still systemic, and a topical that's more for that localized relief. So a patient could potentially utilize any one of these throughout the day to help deal with their symptoms. And I'll go over more to the topical for that localized relief. A little bit more about our tincture specifically, this is really our most popular, I would say, product category within the Allera medical formulated line. Again, these have a um, onset of, you know, anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes, really depending. Um, it will have a longer effect as well for maybe three up to six hours sometimes of the tincture, depending on, you know, the dose and the the patient's level. Um, the shine again is at one-to-one. -one. It does have a citrus flavor to it. The base is MCT oil base, right? And the dosing or the strength rather is five milligrams of total cannabinoids per milliliter. So keeping that ratio of cannabinoid THC to CBD in mind with that total cannabinoid ratio. E, as I mentioned, that one to 10, that more CBD line, this has a blackberry flavor, still with that MCT oil base and five milligrams of total cannabinoids, most of that being CBD per milliliter. And the bottles are 30 ml, right? Great, again, for like a daily use supplemental tincture if for um, more inflammatory type symptoms. Dream, I mentioned that eight to one, I would say our dream tinctures are most popular products across the state. Um, and that's really because it is, it has been shown to work well to help individuals stay asleep with that ratio of the eight to one and a five milligram total cannabinoids per milliliter. This does have a little vanilla uh, custard cream type flavor, very, very mild. I typically recommend this for individuals who might say they have trouble staying asleep, whereas the dream vape might be more appropriate to, for someone who has trouble getting to sleep, right? A THC plus I mentioned um, that currently that is THC only, no terpenes to have any kind of driver in that sense, um, no flavoring. So really a versatile tincture where a patient can add this to a drink or dose it, you know, right from the dropper, et cetera, where they, on those moments where they may need a little more THC to help deal with pain or sleeplessness or anything like that. We are transitioning a THC plus very soon to the Kind Tree brand, and we will be significantly increasing the potency as well. More to come on that, but it will be, um, right now it's at 300 milligrams for the bottle. Uh, we're looking at upwards of 900 or so. And we'll also be releasing some different flavorings to complement the unflavored type as well. Hope is a special tincture as well. So I wanted to call it out separately because we did work with a local nonprofit, <clears throat> Hope Grows for Autism. And Erica Daniels is the president. We worked with her directly. She has a son who is now 16 years old. I think he just had his birthday. I saw uh, with, with autism and she wanted to <clears throat> help develop ways for med medicine, right? In, in the medical cannabis market in PA to help address those cluster symptoms. So we really worked with her um, as, long as, as well as looking at the science with our chief medical officer to develop these two specific HOPE tinctures. So HOPE 1 is a one-to-one -one again, so those equal parts. It's a bit stronger than our others. It's 10 milligrams of total cannabinoids per milliliter. And then it has a little bit more uplifting terpenes to it. And the flavor is chocolate mint. Another thing to note is this is organic olive oil as a base, as opposed to the MCT oil. Um, Erica would recommend the Hope 1 for more mild to moderate symptoms of autism, whereas Hope 2 that has a little bit more THC, it's a 5 to 1 for more of those moderate to severe symptoms of autism. 
the Hope 2 has uh, more relaxing type terpenes and a grapefruit flavor along with that organic olive oil base. Still 10 milligrams of total cannabinoids per milliliter on the Hope. Right now, Soothe is our uh, topical on the market. We did discontinue recently um, the Breathe and the Ease topical. Um, one reason is this just honestly sells better. We get more and an better anecdotal feedback from the Soothe. It is again in that line more meant for pain relief, that five to one ratio. It has a nice passion flower scent to it, very mild, um, and the base is buttercream. So you really don't know that you're wearing something that has cannabis in it. Um, it doesn't really smell. This can really be used anywhere externally for pain and localized pain relief. It won't cross that blood brain barrier. It's not transdermal. So patient can feel confident and they can use it at any point and not feel any of those psychoactive effects. It's not a systemic um, relief. It's that localized. Our next brand, our next line of products is Prism. And Prism, again, is what we all, all, um, all Prism is made using butane hash oil extraction method. It's all manual type concentrates, very high potency, high terpene um, content, great flavor. Then some of the difference with, again, with the live and the cured varieties, the live being made from the live fresh frozen material and the cured from the dried cured plant material. And the lime, um, some of the differences that individuals feel is really the taste. Um, the terpenes in that lime process are a little bit more preserved. So those, those terpenes and the flavonoids tend to really come out in the lime products. Um, cured is just as popular, just as potent, just a different, different flavor, different profile. If you're not familiar with the different types of concentrates, it's really all about the consistency. We have very minimal control over what the end product will be in terms of the concentrate. It's really about um, the process and also that strain and that makeup of that strain on what it tends to, to gravitate towards in that processing. So from left to right, you can see all the different, different consistencies um, and really it's mostly based on personal preference. So batter, <clears throat> butter, batter or butter wax is more like a viscous wax. It's gooey and it can almost be stirred up. It's almost like a whipped type of material. Whereas a crumble is, is typically a wax, but like it sounds more crumbled up. So patients can, can really sprinkle that onto a vape pen um, or any of these can be dabbed using a, what's called a dab rig, right? With a torch um, and really high, high heat to vaporize this. We also have live crystal, which I mentioned a little bit. That is a byproduct of, of the live processing process. And this is a really, really high concentrated live product of THCA crystals. Many times they test in the 90s. I really haven't seen any less than 90% um, potency. And we maintain in this product the high terpene extract as well. So other, other products in this category, they may wash away those terpenes, but we do keep them intact to make it a more robust medical product. Sugar is like the name sounds, it's, it's sugary, it's wet, sappy kind of sugar, almost like a brown sugar type consistency. It could be like a bright yellow to a really nice deep amber color. And these are all photos of our actual products. So that they all have this great golden color to it. Um, the sauce is a little thicker, a little more viscous in texture, a little stickier um, sauce you can put in the freezer and make it a little um, sturdier or keeping that consistency of the, of the sauce. So again, just preference there. Shatter, it's more known for that glass-like texture. Again, you can actually freeze this to preserve it longer. And when you take it out, it will be like glass where it will shatter. Um, and some, some individuals prefer that method a little easier for administration. 
So again, all of these made with butane. Uh, we remove as much as possible of those, any of the harmful waxes, lipids, um, chlorophyll, and you have this beautiful amber um, colored end product that's really great for those individuals with high tolerance, really high chronic pain. Um, again, they need a dab rig or a vaporizer pen to administer this particular category. That is all of our products, all our different categories, our three different brands of the Lara Medical Kind Tree is the strain specific in flower and the prism concentrates. More to come in the future, mention a couple products like RSO will be hitting the market, um, an RSO tincture we're developing, as well as different live products and vaporizables. Um, I also, put together some resources for you all um, in case you do want to look a little further into some of our products. All our different web pages are there. Um, I do send out, um, and I'm sorry, Michelle actually sends out physician wholesale new, or newsletters, physician newsletters. So if she doesn't have your email, please be sure to provide that so we can continue sharing information. And then if you do have any product questions, feel free to reach out. I know Michelle is also a point of contact, but we work closely. And then I just wanted to give you a few resources that I used for the presentation and that I feel are, are great for further research. Um, the book I use most is The Health Effects of Cannabis and Cannabinoids, the most recent from the National Academies of Science and Engineering. I use that all the time to reference um, and create my education. So really hope you found this helpful. And I will put my video back on and see if there's any questions that, that might have come through. Yes, there are just a few. And if you guys have any more, feel free to type away. Um, Dr. Cindy asked, you, she mentioned she signed in late. Um, will we be posting this to watch later? Yes, it's, this is recording. And we will be editing out the first 10 minutes because it's a bunch of nothingness. And we will be posting it with answers to any questions that y'all ask. So I will, and we'll email that out to you once we have the video edited and posted. Cause I'm not sure, sure where we'll post it since this is only a physician training. Mm. Um, we'll probably post it somewhere where like only physicians will be able to access it if they have the link. So one question that was asked um, is there a risk of vapor induced lung injury when using medical marijuana as vaporized oil, cartridges, or flour? And I'm thinking this may be a question for Franmar. I don't know if you yeah. want to, but yeah. Yeah, I saw it and I was thinking, yes, this is probably going to be in my wheelhouse, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I stayed on the call. <laughs> um, the answer is honestly, we don't know. Because cannabis is a schedule one drug, we don't have the testing um, and the studies out there to see what happens when um, patients, especially uh, patients that are using cannabis inhaled for a long period of time. Um, to date, I don't know that anybody has you know, developed lung cancer, that they've linked lung cancer to it or anything like that. Um, Definitely in these times of COVID, we've seen it in the dispensary over this past year that a lot of patients that maybe have used inhaled forms of cannabis before are shying away from that just because, you know, heaven forbid with COVID, it, you know, it does go for the lungs um, and they want to try to preserve that. There are many, many other ways of to ingest and take in the cannabis. It does not have to be inhaled. Um, from tinctures to solutions, to capsules, to tablets, to RSOs, uh, distillate syringes, to topical products. Um, we, have, we have suppositories these days. We have so many other options of which to get that cannabis in us or help with you know, localized effects that we don't need to inhale it if we don't want to. There's so many other options, both fast acting and long acting. So if there's ever a concern with patients, we have so many other products to choose from these days that we can stay away from that. And I think a lot of that media around that was based on illegal cartridges that were being sold on the street and poison pretty yeah. much being in it um, was 
causing causing some of this lung damage. So, but what Framar said too. <laughs> yeah, which and that was that, that was vitamin E oil back in the you know in the news 2019 Yeah, vitamin E acetate. Yes, and and none of the grower processors, Alera included even have that on site. None of that is in any of the products whatsoever in Pennsylvania. So you don't and have all to of the products go through that third party yes. testing. Yes. So right. there's, we, will we would have had to, and any grower would have to report that to the DOH at the time of formulation. So yeah. yeah. And that's another good thing to maybe mention, Marissa, is when like our formulation line, we just don't create that and put that out. We have to send our formulation or our recipe to the Department of Health. They yeah. have to review it. They have to see what's in it, how much is in it, what we're going to do, and they have to approve it or deny it before it goes on the market. Correct. So that's true with yeah. us and all of the other grower processors in Pennsylvania. So there is a huge checks and balance system with this state, with this medical program, which is fantastic because you know what you're getting and stuff was approved because in a lot of states, they can just do what they want. Um, and there's no checks and balances and, you know, there might be pesticides being used and they're not being disclosed, but in Pennsylvania, they really did this program justice in making sure that everything was covered and we do have those checks and balances in place. So patients yeah. are safe taking these products. Which and brings I, us I see in the chat ahead, some questions. I'm sorry. I see in the chat some questions. So. Yes, that's what I say. What brings us to our next question. About <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, a call, so there's two that have something to do with compliance, but dream, um, the recent changes of dream, that's a great example of what Framar was saying. We had to, we made a slight change to dream on the flavor only, not even on the formulation in terms of ratio or terps. Um, and we did have to get approval that could, took quite some time, uh, honestly, to get that approval and re-release. The only change we made was the flavor. We couldn't source anymore the original, which was uh, Tahitian vanilla, and now it's vanilla Bavarian cream. So that's the only difference there. Um, and then in regards to, are you able to grow any strains you want, or do you have to get approval from Harrisburg, AKA DOH, right? Um, yes and no. I mean, so we had to get approval when we first got our license, we had 30 days. Um, to acquire any lineages, strains, clones we wanted without DOH questioning and looking the other way. They didn't care where we got it. We just had those 30 days. And then that's your, that's your strain library for the rest of the time until there's another maybe open period. But that being said, we do breed our plants so we can create new varieties. And there are strains that we haven't even grown yet. We haven't even started yet. So um, I was just going to ask you that. Um, how many strains do we actually have in our library? Because I know we have strains we haven't even yep. grown yet. We have over 300 and we keep all of them. So we have a genetic library of all those strains in case we ever want to pull go back and, and regrow them. So, okay. And cool. I think this last question, one of the questions was in there was me chatting to somebody else and it went into the wrong thing. So no, no problem. Funny. I think there's the a question on suppository. Yes. Bradmar. <laughs> yes, for Framar. So it says, what is the, speaking of suppositories, since you mentioned it, Framar, what is the onset of action? So the cannabis suppositories can be used either vaginally or rectally. And the onset is very similar to those um, prescription suppositories or over-the-counter suppositories. So around anywhere from, you know, 15 minutes maybe up to an hour, just kind of depends. Usually, as we know, suppositories are more on the faster acting um, when they kind of hit. I usually tell patients anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, obviously, when you insert, lay on your side so everything can get absorbed. As we know, as a suppository, when it enters, whether the vaginal or the anal canal, it's, you know, that's nice warm area. So that suppository is going to go into a liquid type of state to get absorbed. Um, usually if you're laying down, you're gonna get better absorption. So everything just kind of doesn't, you know, gravity doesn't take over. Um, and then the effects are gonna last anywhere. It can be six, I've heard up to 12 hours with some patients. It just depends on how much the tolerance, how their absorption is going, how that medication is acting in that individual's body. We all know that this is very individualized. What works for one person and what lasts for a certain period of time in one person is not the same with another. Um, so it's, it's very similar almost to, um, like I said, over-the-counter prescription suppositories, same um, idea when it comes to that. Suppositories, like I said, um, they're great for whether it's uh, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, 
um, pain in that area, uh, endometriosis, pelvic floor pain. Um, we've had patients, it works well for lower back pain just because lower back pain and that area are all in the same area. So it works, uh, we get good results for that. So, you know, a different kind of form of consumptions, not everybody's favorite, but very effective. Underrated too in the market, I would say. Mm -hmm. Underrated, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any oh, other I'm questions? Mute, Michelle. Oh, I'm on mute. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, thank you, ladies. It doesn't look like we have any other questions. So we have seven minutes left. Um, if yeah, I look like we answered them all. So just want to say thank you to both um, Marissa and Fran Mar, and also thank, thank you. you to the doctors who. Um, logged in to learn more about Alera and Kind Tree and the Apothecarium and all of our products. And next week, um, we'll continue our series. We'll have another grower processor. Um, do you know who that is off the top of your head, Fran Mar? I should know and I don't because I don't remember the list. <laughs> I, I don't either, but you, you all have it. We will send you the link um, next week as They're well. They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so thank you, everyone. Have a great night, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.